Hello, I'm Sofia, and welcome to What We Need to Know About Ukraine. Here, I learn about Ukrainian history, literature, and culture, and share my findings with you. Today's episode is about Ivan Mazepa, one of Ukraine's most famous and important hetmans, leaders of the Cossacks. For two centuries after Mazepa, Ukrainians who were fighting and supporting Ukrainian freedom would be called after him, Mazepinsi. If you haven't listened to my episode, Ukraine, Country of the Cossacks, I strongly recommend that you do so before listening to this episode, since it is there that I explain what are the Cossacks and also some technical terms. In other words, really necessary information to understand this episode more. Let's begin. Mazepa was born in 1639 in present-day Kyiv Oblast, and then it was Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. He was born in a noble family. He studied in Kyiv Mohylenska Akademia and successfully graduated. At the time, the academy was an intellectual center that was very important for shaping Ukrainian identity. After that, he studied in a collegium in Warsaw, where he had the chance to become a page of John II Casimir Vasa, who was the King of Poland and the Grand Duke of Lithuania at the time. And this king also favored Mazepa a lot. Mazepa therefore lived at the royal court and traveled with the king. He has been to Italy, Germany, France, and also perhaps Austria. He spoke many languages as well. He was obviously fluent in Ukrainian, he was also fluent in Latin. A very well-known French diplomat of the time said that Mazepa's Latin was impeccable. Mazepa also knew Polish, Italian, and German, and he could communicate really well in Tatar and French. Mazepa was still young during the Hetman Bogdan Khmelnytsky's uprising, also known as the Cossack-Polish War, and this war led to the creation of the Cossack Hetmanate state. So, Mazepa was young also during the fall of said state. After the fall of the Hetmanate state, Ukraine was divided between the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and between Muscovy. That is important to note, since we can see that Mazepa lived during an independent Ukrainian state, and that too had affected him. And we can also see that the state that he lives in now is torn apart between two different countries. In the late 1660s, Mazepa returns to Ukraine, and at the end of 1669, he enters the service of Hetman Petro Doroshenko, and this became a turning point in his life and the activities of the future Hetman. Since then, uh, Mazepa was completely devoted to the Ukrainian state affairs. Like I already said, Ukraine was divided into two different countries, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and Muscovy. And it was divided along Dnipro, which is a river that also separates Kyiv. And it also separated Ukraine into not only two different states, but also two different Cossack states. And Hetman Doroshenko really wanted to unite the two sides, which eventually does happen under Mazepa. Now, the right and left banks of the Dnipro river are really important to understand. When it comes to determining the sides of rivers and which ones are left and which ones are right, one must look in the direction the river flows in. And you have to look at the river flowing downstream or in the direction that the river is flowing. So on the right side, it will be right bank and on the left side, it will be left bank when facing downstream. Now, the river Dnipro, which divides both Kyiv and Ukraine, into two, flows into the Black Sea. So when looking at a map of Ukraine, the side that is on the left and closer to Poland is the right bank. Meanwhile, the side that is on the right is the left bank. This is important to note when talking about Hetmans and Cossacks in general, since when it comes to Dnipro, left is right and right is left. This will become very useful a little later in the podcast. But now let's go back to Mazepa. Sometime after 1969, Mazepa married, uh, and we know very little about his wife, and also we know very, very little about his children. But we do know about his time in service. 
When in the service of Hetman Doroshenko, Mazepa was at first the commander of the Hetman's guard. Later, somewhere around 1674, he performed the duties of the general scribe. So he is called in negotiations with representatives of Muscovy, for example, and he has to also take royal letters and write them down. He also participated in the Doroshenko War as an ally of the Ottoman Empire against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, particularly the campaign to Galicia in 1672. Doroshenko appreciated Mazepa's great abilities, his quick wit and curiosity, and also entrusted him with important diplomatic missions. In June of 1674, Doroshenko, the hetman on the right side of the river Dnipro, sent Mazepa to Crimea and the Ottoman Empire on a diplomatic mission. On the way to Crimea, Mazepa fell into the hands of the Zaporizhian Cossacks from the left bank, who could have killed him, yet Ivan Sirko, the Koshovoy Ottoman, recognized Mazepa and saved him. If you don't know the names of the Cossacks, for example, what title is Koshovoy Ottoman, you should really go and listen to Ukraine, country of the Cossacks. When Ivan Samoylovich, the hetman of the left bank of Ukraine, having learned about this, demanded that Sirko hand over Mazepa to him, with his experience in international affairs and impeccable manners, Mazepa managed to convince Samoylovich to make him a confidant, and Mazepa became a military general, Viskovoy Osavul. Starting in 1676, Mazepa went to Moscow with diplomatic missions almost every year. Following the hetman's instructions, he convinced Moscow's government officials to transfer the Slobid regiments under the control of the hetmanship, not to sign the eternal peace between the Poles and the Muscovites, which unfortunately was eventually signed, and quote-unquote legitimize the division of Ukraine. He also shared his thoughts on economic innovations in the autonomy, gave advice on how to better organize the defense of Kyiv against the Horde, etc. He was not only the main intermediary between the left bank Cossacks and Moscow, but also a very important diplomat in general and went to many different countries on various diplomatic missions. He became, one could say, the right-hand man of the Hetman. Mazepa was clearly an extremely talented person who could be relied upon. Wherever Mazepa would be, whatever his position was, and in any circumstances, Mazepa always supported and pushed for Ukraine's national interest, and not those of Moscow or the Commonwealth. But of course, eventually, Mazepa does become a hetman and he does come to power. The bulava, or the ceremonial mace of the hetman, of the Cossacks, fell into his hands in 1687 as a result of a conspiracy of the Cossacks, inspired by the favorite of the then Moscow ruler Sofia, Prince Vasily Golitsyn. Hetman Ivan Samoylovich was deprived of power and then exiled to Siberia. Soon Golitsyn himself, fell into disgrace and followed in the footsteps of Samoylovich, and Sofia lost her power as well. It seemed that with such a distribution of forces, Mazepa had only a few days to be Hetman, and with such uncertain conditions, he managed to retain power and significantly strengthen his own positions. The Cossacks were quite democratic, and they would elect their own Hetmans, but because the Cossacks had very limited power, and because of Moscow's control over the left bank, the military council held to choose the new hetman had only formal significance. Mazepa's candidacy was acceptable to both the Cossacks as well as the Tsarist government of Moscow, since Ivan had influential connections with them, being a longtime diplomat there. To Moscow, it probably seemed that Mazepa's heart was close to Moscow, more so at least than the hearts of the other candidates. So during the election, all measures were taken by the Moscow government to ensure the desired election outcome. The polling place was surrounded by a tight circle of the Moscow army. Riflemen and rangers were stationed around the Cossacks. Only 2,000 Cossacks were present, and that is a very small part of the Cossack army. Now, regular or real Cossack elections were different from the ones today. Instead of casting anonymous ballots, they would all gather and yell out the name of the person who they want to elect and who they want to be Hetman. Many called out Mazepa's name, and when some to try call out other names, they were immediately and forcefully silenced by the Moscow troops. Ivan Mazepa was elected hetman of Ukraine. It is from this point, though, that the flourishing of Ukraine begins after a period of decline. 
Mazepa, as a person of power, now had to lead both external and internal affairs. Mazepa's approach to external affairs was quite interesting. First and foremost, Mazepa's goal as hetman of the Zaporizhian army was to unify the Cossack lands of the left bank, right bank, Zaporizhia, and of possible Slobozhanshina and the Canada of Ukraine, as part of a single Ukrainian state under the hetman's regiment, to establish a strong hetman's power in a European-type state with the preservation of the traditional Cossack system of ruling. Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli wrote in his book The Prince, quote, If an injury has to be done to a man, it should be so severe that his vengeance need not be feared. End of quote. The same thing is with a state. One should not attack or injure another state if they are not certain about a decisive win. So Mazepa chose to remain on a more or less friendly term with Moscow as well as the Poles for most of his career. But he did fight for maximum autonomy in both sides of Ukraine with quite good success as well. And how is that possible? Because Mazepa did manage to unite them, and this is how it happened. In 1702-1704, an uprising led by Semen Pali broke out on the right bank. The reason for the uprising was the restriction of the interests of the Cossacks by the Poles. In 1699, a decision was made to liquidate Cossack regiments in Kyiv and Bratslav voivodships. The Polish nobility got the opportunity to return their former estates and restore their dominance on the right bank. The Cossacks completely refused to comply with this order to disband the Cossack regiments and transfer the reinforcements to the Poles. In the spring of 1702, an uprising began in Podilia and Bratslav Oblast, which also spread to the territory of Kyiv Oblast and Eastern Volyn. The uprising was suppressed by the Polish Muscovy troops. Pali conducted negotiations with Hetman Ivan Mazepa for the reunification of the right bank and the left bank of Ukraine, and did find support, but ended up being arrested and sent to Siberia anyways. In 1704, the troops of Mazepa entered the right bank and managed to unite the right bank and the left bank. Mazepa managed to take advantage of the situation that arose as a result of the war between Muscovy and Sweden, and the weakening of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Neither the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth nor Muscovy liked Mazepa's control over the area, but Mazepa managed to control it and not to aggravate either of them too much. Now, the relations between Mazepa and Peter I Tsar of Muscovy, were seriously complicated by the Northern War of 1700 to 1721, also known as the Great Northern War, which broke out due to the rivalry between Muscovy and Sweden on the Baltic Sea, where at the time there was trade and Swedish and Dutch merchants were leading in it, but it was necessary for Peter to ensure the preferential position of Moscow's merchant in the Baltics. During this war, the Tsar mercilessly exploited all of the resources of Ukraine. Cossack regiments took part in battles on the territory of the Baltic states, Poland and Saxony, suffering significant losses. The civilian population had to support Muscovy's troops and work on the construction of fortresses. The reforms of Peter I threatened the autonomy of Ukraine and the independence of the Cossack army from the Tsarist army. Peter I counted on the help of the Polish king and was ready to give them part of the Ukrainian lands. Fearing betrayal, Mazepa began secret negotiations with Peter's adversary, the Swedish king Charles XII, and the Polish king Stanislav Leszczynski. In October 1708, the Polish-Swedish army marched on Ukraine, and Moscow's Tsar refused to help Ivan Mazepa. After that, Mazepa joined the Swedish army of Charles XII. In negotiations with Charles, Mazepa raised the question of the creation of an independent Ukrainian state, and received a promise from Charles not to interfere in Ukraine's internal affairs. In the summer of 1709, the Swedish and Muscovy troops met near Poltava, Ukraine, and the famous Battle of Poltava ensued. Mazepa was joined by the Nuzovi and the registered Zaporizhian Cossacks. And on July 6, 1709, the Swedish army suffered a crushing defeat near Poltava. Charles XII and Mazepa retreated, and with them more than 4,500 Cossacks. Mazepa had to go to Turkey, where he soon died, just three months after, 
on October 3rd, 1709. The king brutally punished the Hetman's supporters. The Hetman's capital, Baturin, in Chernihiv Oblast, Ukraine, was destroyed and burned down with the inhabitants. Women were raped and murdered, and so were the children and the men. The same thing happened in Labadin, in Sumy Oblast, Ukraine. None of the citizens of these beautiful cities wanted to surrender to the Tsarist Moscow troops. A well-known French philosopher Voltaire wrote in his essay Histoire de l'Empire de Russie sous Pierre le Grand, The History of the Russian Empire and Peter I, some paragraphs concerning Mazepa and Ukraine, and he noted the very sad truth about Ukrainian history. And please do note that in his writings, he used the word Ukraine. He wrote, quote, Ukraine has always thought to be free. L'Ukraine a toujours aspiré à être libre. But surrounded by Muscovy, the states of the great lord, he means Turkey, and Poland, it was forced to look for a protector, and therefore a host, among one of these states. At first it came under the care of Poland, which behaved with it as with a dependent state. Then she succumbed to the Muscovite, who did everything possible to enslave her. At first, Ukrainians had the privilege of electing their prince, whom they called general, général en français, and soon they lost this right, and their general was appointed by the royal court in Moscow. End of quote. Unfortunately, Mazepa could not unify and lead Ukraine to complete independence from both the Poles and Moscow, but Mazepa did a lot internally in Ukraine and made it a more flourishing, prosperous place than before. There was a huge economic and cultural development during his being Hetman. Before 1708, when the Northern War moved into Ukraine's territory, Ukraine was relatively calm and had little direct threats of war. This left money to be invested into churches as well as education. As a zealous supporter of Christianity, Mazepa provided funds for the construction of a number of cathedrals in the Ukrainian Baroque style. In total, more than 200 churches were built during his reign, and 45 of them were under his direct patronage. It should be noted that this large complex of works was provided for the most part by the Hetman's treasury. That is, the Hetman invested the funds collected from the taxes in the construction of the Gyupachesk Lavra, the construction of the large wall around it, and other church projects. Mazepa also made generous donations to both Ukrainian and foreign churches. He was called the patron saint of Orthodox faith in the southeast and especially in Turkey. To this day in Jerusalem, in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, a communion table made of gold and silver with a fine carving of Christ's burial and the inscription, at the expense of His Highness Ivan Mazepa, Hetman of Ruthenia, is kept. None of the Hetmans have done as much for faith and clergy as Mazepa. But that is not the only thing. Because of Mazepa, the Kyiv Mohila Collegium acquired the status of an academy, then known as the Mohila Mazepinska Academia. Thanks to the Hetman's financial support, new buildings were built, the number of students was increased to 2,000. It became the spiritual and scientific center of all of Ukraine. When it comes to the economic side of things, during Ivan Mazepa's rule, Ukraine maintained its economic independence. Mazepa and his government promoted small and medium-sized entrepreneurship in every possible way, encouraging its initiators and organizers with various benefits of an economic and legal nature. During Mazepa's time, national trade expanded significantly, especially with foreign countries. Quote, Exports and imports were oriented towards the West. Traditional Ukrainian trade routes led there. This is in particular showing that Ukraine was by no means dependent on Moscow economically, says history professor Boris Krupnitsky. Mazepa was also the first hetman who took the initiative to stop the predatory destruction of forests. The revival of Kyiv as the ancient capital of the Ukrainian state was also Mazepa's work. The scale of majestic and magnificent construction in Kyiv during the time of Hetman Mazepa is compared to only one period in the history of the Ukrainian capital, the times of the Kyivan Rus. Ivan Mazepa built an independent national state, and the state needed symbols, and the national architectural look of the capital was one of them. 
It was then that Kyiv was decorated with amazing Ukrainian Baroque buildings. The most famous architectural gems of the capital bear witness to Mazepa's reign to this day. Because it was, at the Hetman's initiative, with his money and his artistic talent, uh, that the following were built or rebuilt. Uh, St. Sophia Cathedral, Kyiv Pechersk Lavra, Michael's Golden Domed Monastery, St. Kirill's Church. These are some of what remained. And before the communists in the 1930s, we also had a magnificent decoration of the Epiphany Cathedral in the Brotherhood Monastery. During Mazepa's time, Kyiv was reborn as the spiritual center of Ukraine. Its importance and influence extends far to the east and south, and the countries of Eastern Europe and the Orthodox East. It was not only Voltaire that mentioned Mazeppa. Lord Byron and Victor Hugo each wrote a poem called Mazeppa. Taras Shevchenko dedicated a few poems to Mazeppa, and the Ukrainian poet Baltelimon Kulish wrote a poem as well. Composers such as Franz Liszt and Tchaikovsky wrote music and operas named after him. In total, 186 engravings, 42 paintings, 22 musical works, 17 literary works, and 6 sculptures are dedicated to him. Ivan Mazepa is an incredibly important and wonderful figure in Ukrainian history. He ruled as hetman for 22 years, never had a revolt against him, and was highly successful in developing education, economy, religion, and Ukrainian architecture in general. Mazepa was able to distance himself from Moscow and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, as well as unify both sides of the river. His rule met an unfortunate end, but his valor, his genius diplomacy, and passion for Ukraine truly inspire art, literature, music, and a fight for Ukraine's territorial, cultural, and linguistic integrity.
Thank you so much for joining me today, and this was What We Need to Know About Ukraine this week.